You know, all I do is write and read, uh, write and talk. That's all. I have no other products. So let's see. There's another cr uh, 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 cruise clip that's worth playing because, again, I don't want you to assume I'm saying cruise is somebody I don't respect. I do. Listen to what he said in clip 10 that I think is superb, and Cruz would make a great head of the United States. He'd make a great attorney general. And I hope that if Obama, <laughs> I almost said, if Trump wins, I'm getting tired, it's Friday. I hope that when Trump wins, he offers the position of attorney general to Ted Cruz, and that Ted Cruz is gracious enough to accept that position. And he cleans house in the Justice Department. Let's listen to Ted Cruz in clip number 10. Today, many of us picked up our newspapers, and we were horrified to see the sight of 10 American sailors on their knees with their hands on their heads. In that State of the Union, President Obama didn't so much as mention the 10 sailors that had been captured by Iran. President Obama is preparing to send $100 billion or more to the Ayatollah Khamenei. And I'll tell you, it was heartbreaking. But the good news is, the next Commander-in-Chief is standing on this stage. And I give you my word, if I am elected President, no service man or service woman will be forced to be on their knees, and any nation that captures our fighting men and women will feel the full force and fury of the United States of America. That's a beautiful speech. Cruz could be a great attorney general. He could be a great defense secretary. Instead of these wimps and cowards and jackals that Obama has appointed, these yes men that are running everything wrongly, every one of the men on that stage, including Carly Fiorina, uh-oh, I said it again. Uh, I, I don't want to modify, but every one of the Republican candidates on that stage would make a better president than the imposter from Chappaqua. And I'm proud to tell you I'm proud to be a conservative watching conservatives debate while Hillary Clinton has nothing, no debates whatsoever, ever. There have been no debates with Hillary Clinton, none whatsoever. It's right out of the ex-Soviet Union. She's like a female Khrushchev in about the same level of style. Back in a minute. I ran all the way No, I, I've moved on. I think the 50s rock and roll phase of my show is over. It's been 21 years. It's worked great. I don't even know of any music that would fit the show anymore. When you think about it, there's no music that fits my mood, my nature, my view. The world's changed so drastically. And I don't know that we're going to get through the next number of months with this con man in the White House. I, really, I can't state with any confidence that this man, this treacherous thing in the White House won't do something so disastrous to us that we won't recover from. I think he's working with the Iranian government on this boat issue. I believe that there's so much more to this story that we should know about it. We should know. How did they not fight back? How did they not fight back? I never heard of the Navy surrendering. I don't understand it. Un oh, look, the Iranian patrol boats were very superior in both speed and firepower. That I understand. They could have blown them out of the water with one shot. They had huge cannons. And these boats, I don't think, carry anything more than 50 cows. I don't know what they carry. But when you're facing a 40 millimeter or 76 millimeter uh, range pointed gun at you, I guess they surrender in hands up or they would have died. Okay, then how did they get there? How did they get there? How did they get there? The released sailors, you watch when they're released. That's if, you know, I'm very worried about them. My fear is that they're going to suddenly disappear. I'm serious. This is what really worries me. These young people on those boats, I am very worried that they will be harmed by this government. That's what I'm very worried about. That's what I'm very worried about. They didn't stray into the Iranian waters. That's a nonsense, nonsensical story. That is complete BS from one side of it to the other. Nonsense. We have people sending in emails who were Navy SEALs in the 80s, and they know about this kind of operation. 
that is transiting small boats in foreign waters. They knew how to do it. And they say today, as I said to you on the show the other day, remember I said they had multiple GPS devices. I knew it as a small boater. You don't just rely upon your chart plotter. You have handheld GPS devices. Your cell phone is a GPS device. Do you know that? It's a compass and a GPS device. So you know just where you are. And so Iran says they strayed into Iranian waters. That's nonsense. It's a setup. And then he says, the SEAL sent this to a friend of mine, which I just got. Listen carefully, and I'm quoting now. For an open water transit between nations, the course is studied and planned in advance by the leaders of the Riverine Squadron, with specific attention given to staying wide and clear of any hostile nations claim territorial waters. The boats are given a complete mechanical check before departure, and they have sufficient fuel to accomplish their mission plus extra. And then, if for some inexplicable and rare circumstance... One boat breaks down. The other would tow it. That's why two boats go out on these trips. It's called self-rescue, and it's standard operating procedure. People are saying that they state with complete confidence that both Iran and our own government are lying. The boats did not enter Iranian waters. They were run down in international waters by Iranian patrol boats and forced to surrender. Listen to what I just said to you. This is a huge international incident. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. All right, now let's look at the other side of the coin. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We know Donald Trump's going to win the, the, the Republican nomination, no matter what the, the party does. Now let's look at Clinton. Her lead is evaporating, and some Democrats see 2008 all over again. But some are saying in the Washington Post that Hillary Clinton's national lead is slipping faster in 16 than it did in 08. That she's liable to lose to the crazy man, the crazy commie, Sanders. And they're terrified that if Sanders is the nominee, uh, that not only will they lose, it'll destroy them all the way down the line, down to the state house, And they'll be back where they were, which is in the outhouse. Sanders, as you well know, is what he is. He is a, you, you talk about New York values? Sanders represents a certain type of New Yorker, New Yorker, the type I ran away from. Why I left New York in uh, 1970. I ran away from people like this. Diehard socialist, communists, anti-Americans to their core. The spritzer types. I couldn't stand them. And I didn't even know why I hated them. But here he is again. He's like a, a, a monster that came up from a, a swamp to plague us. An old line union communist. It will destroy the Democrat Party, which is I pray to God he wins the primary. Because let the people really decide for themselves whether they want America or they want the ex-Soviet Union. Because that's what it'll come down to. So the Democrats are saying, well, there's anxiety that many of our candidates have in swing districts where a Hillary Clinton nomination erases that anxiety. Really, no kidding. And so I say, go, Bernie, go. I may even contribute money to Bernie's campaign. Let's send him $10 each. Let's see him. I mean, that would really be the greatest thing in the world to see Sanders beat Hillary and then have a, a, an outright election contest between co communism and capitalism. I don't think America's ready for the Soviet Union, by the way. No, I don't really think so. So it's uh, Sanders now, they're running head-to-head, -head, Sanders versus Clinton in, in amongst Democrats. Not too long ago, she had a lead of 24 points. Now it's even Stephen. So what do you think is doing this? Huh? Well, it's because he's promising everything to everybody for nothing, like every other dictator ever did. Not only would he print money, but everything would be free under Bernie Sanders. And he would certainly come down on, on the rich. We so, certainly come down on the rich. The rich would really get it. Yep. Well, let's see what happens whether we have a, a socialist running against an outright capitalist. If it is, it's 85-15. Because there's not an immigrant that comes to this country that wants to create here what they left behind there. Let me be very clear about it. Let me talk specifically about the Mexicans, legal or illegal, who come here. They leave a socialist country. Do you think they want to reproduce the country they left behind? They come here because it's a country where they can get ahead. It's a country where they can save money, buy a house, send their children to college. They know that Bernie Sanders is 
is a representative of the opposite of that. They know what he represents. And they know that with Donald Trump, they're just liable to be more, let us say, affluent than with uh, any other Democrat in particular, but specifically with Bernie Sanders. So I think that Sanders' looks and his ideology is going to be a gigantic uh, charade for us to enjoy. And the one thing that I like about Bernie Sanders is that he's never, ever, ever stopped saying he's a socialist. Now, he is lying about that as well, because he's not a socialist. He's a communist. He has been since childhood. That's what he was raised on. Dirty Sanders was raised on communism. Dirty Sanders was raised on anti-Americanism. Dirty Sanders was raised on virtually hating everything American. If you look back at Dirty Sanders' beginnings, if you look at back to the days of seltzer on the oil cloth floor, if you look back to the table talk with the cutting knives, and if you look at a, the history of Dirty Sanders' background and you look at his parents, what you have is an outright Soviet-style, Stalin-esque communist in plain English. America will not vote for him. Yes, he might appeal to uh, a certain segment of population, you know, students. What do they know? What do they know? Nothing. In fact, I would raise the voting age to 26. Incidentally, I wouldn't lower it. I'd raise it. Because until you've had a job, you have no idea what life is all about. I mean, let's be real. What does a college kid know about life? Nothing, except what the professors stick in their, in their ears. So, anyway, I hope he wins. I hope he defeats Hillary. And she goes on to a very happy life afterwards as a grandmother. And then we have Sanders versus uh, Trump, and then Trump wins. Then we have to do what I said yesterday. I spent one hour. By the way, many of you leave the show after two hours. My entire third hour yesterday was memorable. I spent one hour delineating all of the left-wing organizations that need to be investigated when Trump becomes president. I named them one after the other. It was one of my best hours. It popped out of a... Uh, a deep understanding I have of the far left. And if you missed it, I'm sorry. I'll try to do it again for you one day. But there's no debates on the on the uh, on the Democrat side. What what debate have you seen? When have you seen a debate? None. And I hope that the former candidate on the Democrat side, the former Navy Secretary, whose name I forget again every day, I, I raise his name and forget it the same day. And so do the guys who work for me; they can't remember again. Jim Webb, sorry, Jim. I pray that Jim Webb comes back and runs as an independent Democrat. I would, I would certainly welcome that. And the reason they knocked him out of the box is because he's an actual patriot. He believes in borders, language, and culture, and you know that the Democrat socialist Pelosi machine can't have that. So here's the callers now. WMAL, James, you're calling about the Iranian uh, false flag incident. What's your opinion? Well, my opinion is that having flown in that area as a former military pilot and, and actually being um, called on the radio from the Iranians trying to get me to come to come into their airspace, um, it, yeah, this this could be a possibility of the same thing of radio false radio calls being put out and um, the boat being lured into Iranian waters by mistake. Um, it, oh, wait, it, sir, wait a minute, Let, let's be real. How do you get lured if you have a, a GPS and you know what the charts show you? How can you get lured? Uh, you, you can get lured in the fact that they can, you know, for example, if for, for aircraft, it could be the transponder has a certain code on it. Aircraft, you know, with this transponder code, you have entered Iranian airspace, and, uh, you know, they give you some directions that way, and, and if you think that oh i'm really i really am in that airspace um mm -hmm. you know that could be that could be a possible <laughs> so you you think Every the iranians l lured them in to make themselves look like benevolent uh, benevolent people basically you're saying that yeah lured them in well, i i would go further and i would just go back to my main point this is a kabuki play between the obama administration and the terrorists that run iran and i thank you for the call i want to know who the fleet commander was i mean you know ships don't operate in a vacuum these little boats came off a bigger boat. The bigger boat was part of a fleet. The fleet answers to somebody back in the U.S. Where were they? Where, where's the chain of command here? Where's the chain of command? Why are we not hearing a word about it? Because there's something that stinks here. Something is very wrong with this picture. But let's go back to Democrat, Republican, something I don't often do. But before we do, we're going to go to Sean Penn. 
who gave a little pre-interview today on his uh, meeting of uh, of the year 